If this is your first time joining us, welcome to the Girl I Guess podcast. I'm your host, Karen Civil. And I am Ming Lee. <laughs> Thank you for that extra. Uh. How's your face still feeling? It's still a little swollen. Girl, it's been a couple weeks now. You I might know. need to revisit them. I know, but you know, I got stitches and bone grafting done, so it's going down. Okay, I'm not going to torture you with getting on a flight <laughs> for a couple of days again. I feel bad. We may have a new set design in Atlanta. Okay. So I might come to you. Uh, I wish. Girl, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so today's episode is kind of special. Okay, because it's different. Yes. So we thought about doing something different with our listeners today. We call this our AMA episode where you can ask, me anything. Well, it's ask us anything. Right. <laughs> um, so um, our producer, Jay, collected an assortment of questions and comments from everyone from our um, DMs. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be answering them today. Okay. Let's do it. Let's, okay. get, let's get in our business. You want to rock, paper, more? scissors to see who goes first? Yeah. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Are you a cheater? Yeah, when, you know, tic tac is my game. Because when you say shoot... You supposed to actually? Yeah, I really wanted you to go first. <laughs> when did you go first? Okay. Um, okay, let's get into the first one. Ming, I see this one a lot. What is your um, background? Are you mixed with Asian? No, I am a hundred percent all Negro mm -hmm. on both sides, as far as I can see it. I think people think you're Kamor Lee's daughter. I know. Sometimes I get her. Um, I get her PR emails and um, stuff. And I'm like, no, I think you have the wrong one. Yeah. They're like, are you sure? I'm absolutely positive I'm not related <laughs> to Russell. <laughs> or the queen, Kamora, <laughs> who I love so much. Um, no, but I'm not mixed with Asian. And um, the naming Lee actually came from one. I loved Kamora growing up. I thought she was the head bitch in charge. Like, I loved everything about her. And so when I got into the um, becoming a hairstylist and I needed a name for my card, I thought Ming Lee would stand out. If you didn't, if you didn't remember anything else about me, you will remember I was the black girl with the Asian name. And it always sparked conversation. Like, people would literally used to be arguing, like, no, she's really Asian. No, she's really all black. And I would just sit back with my feet kicked up and, like, you know, I'm Asian or, like, you know, I'm not Asian, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so they want to know, Karen, do you have any sisters or only a brother? Um, I do have sisters, not by blood. Um, but I say I do have sisters. I have uh, three brothers, mm -hmm. two older, one younger. And then, yeah, I have sisters between you, Alori, and Tiana. So three sisters, three brothers. Okay. Yeah. And me, I have, that's a bunch of us. Yeah. Yeah, nice Brady Bunch family. <laughs> <laughs> I have, what, three sisters and six brothers. Mm, okay. It's a, little, it's a lot of us. So me and my brother, Mike, we're actually the closest in age. We're a year apart mm -hmm. and we grew up together. Okay. So that's the brother that I always talk about. Most people are familiar with. Um, and then my youngest brother, um, traditionally it's called half brother, but I just say brother. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't believe in half. Um, but yeah, it's my half brother, Jeff, who I believe is, this is bad because I'm one of those. I think he's like 18. Oh, he's a, he's a baby. Yes. He's, he's like. So you get a pass. Yeah, he's he's like a baby. He's like 18, 19. See, my parents had nine kids together. So we are all literally, um, they had nine of us in 11 years. So like we're all step, stair step, like a year, mm -hmm. anywhere from nine months to 18 months um, apart. So it gets a little wild and crazy for Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> I played um, Uno with y'all. It, it definitely gets it, it definitely gets crazy with your brothers and sisters. Oh yeah, they still sending me Uno rules to show 
to Karen. Like when they pop up on Instagram, they were like, show this to Karen. Show this to Karen. So <laughs> let me give y'all a little backtrack. Yes, we're still doing the Ask Us Anything, but let me tell y'all anything <laughs> right now. So Because she's a cheater. I'm not a cheater. And, so Uno. I never play TikTok with her. I mean, not TikTok toe. TikTok toe. Or I, go first. Cause I, I kill in that, so it's okay. Like, I've only lost to, I think, like two people. And you lost to me when I got to go first. No, you, no, I didn't. Yes, you, you did. You, uh, now now you you're were preg- You were pregnant, so let's not even do that. Your recollection is a little bit different. Let me get into this Uno story. Because like <laughs> her family... <laughs> So I'm playing with her brothers, and I believe your sister too. Yeah, I wouldn't play with y'all. I like was drinking, and I, yeah. I would just hear them yelling from the next room. So her brothers, I don't know if they had this thing they already aligned to put themselves together to try to create this scare tactic. <laughs> and they're just, I'm like, oh, well, I don't play like that. So I felt like they're just making up any rules. They're like, yeah, so yeah, you got to pick up too. I'm like, S- says who? Like, they're just making it up as they go along. So me being me, fully living in the Karen name, I'm looking up the rules. So I'm looking up the rules and I'm like, oh, nah, they, you can't do this. They're like, what? you're not playing the black way. Yeah. <laughs> Started getting mad and throwing the like, we play a black version over here. Get with the times. But yeah, that's them. So next question for you, Ming. Ooh, I love this. I know this secret. And this is good. What is your secret for cursing people out? So the secret to cursing somebody out via text message is, okay, so like we live in a day and age of uh, people wanting to like screenshot your messages and like, ex- you know what I mean, post them on social media or show them to, you know, to other people that shouldn't see the messages, especially if it's between friends. So what I do is if I'm going to air somebody out or cuss them out, <laughs> I always add in like a very intimate, embarrassing piece about them. So like you're not going to post on, you know what I mean, Instagram if in a message, you know what I mean, I include some very embarrassing facts about you. Like there's just like, you know, a guy like saying like, oh, yeah, like, you know, for instance, like say like a gr- me and some girl is arguing or whatnot. And I know she cheated on her boyfriend. Right. But I know she might want to show these messages to somebody. I'm like, yeah, and keep my name out your mouth before, you know what I mean? You wasn't you wasn't too busy when you was over there cheating on Joe with um with Lamont and yep. blah, blah, blah. so on like March second on March the second, you was on yeah, like so, so you so don't street. Want, right? You don't want me to start talking about that, so leave my business the fuck alone. And so like you, they're not going. Most likely, they're not going to show your messages or post them on Instagram because it has it has very incriminating details inside that message. And so like when I want to air somebody out and I want to make sure this never sees the day of light, but I want you to completely understand that you got me fucked up. I'm gonna just. Sprinkle in a little bit of embarrassment <laughs> Just razzle dazzle I'll be like this I know this won't see the light of day <laughs> Razzle dazzle that The animosity and, and shade towards them <laughs> Okay Karen How do you feel about doing business With somebody that you're dating See that depends But the biggest thing for me Is you have to make sure with Dating and friendship before business, it is a foundation. Mm -hmm. It is sturdy. It's solid. It's there. You both have core values. You have an understanding of what you want, business values, so that there are no lines crossed, no boundaries being disrespected, and um, things like that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now it's to you. That was (laughs) long gated. Let's see. (laughs) Um... Ming, yes. What's it like to be a millionaire? And will you, what are you going to raise Story with a silver spoon in her mouth? Yeah. What What am I going to raise it with a plastic one? <laughs> <laughs> I work too fucking hard. <laughs> um, well, I think I think like as far as like me, nobody in my um, like I didn't come from. A, a super wealthy um, family. I was adopted. I was adopted when I was six um, mm-hmm. by my grandmother and by my aunt, and they were really middle class. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't want for nothing as a kid. Like so, I didn't grow up like struggling. 
um, or anything like that. But what I will say is that story will grow up with a silver spoon with lessons in place. Meaning like when I was in the sixth grade, I learned how to balance a checkbook. So my aunt gave us $500 mm-hmm. and she like got these checks made. Mm-hmm. And the only way we could spend the money, she was, she became the bank and mm-hmm. we would have to write her checks. Like if we wanted to go to the store and buy like, you know, not what we needed. Like, you know, not like our food to eat dinner. But like if we wanted to go to McDonald's and it was dinner at home, we needed our checkbook. If we wanted to get um Snickers mm-hmm. or if I wanted like coach was the shit in the sixth grade. Like if I wanted mm-hmm. to get that coach belt and, and purse, like I needed, I had to write a check for it. So I learned, you know, at a very young age, the value of money. And I learned one thing that, my aunt shout out to my aunt friend always instilled in me was you can have anything that you work for so like if I wanted five hundred dollars sneakers I could have them she wouldn't just go out and buy them she would make up all these things that equal five hundred dollars like cutting the grass organizing the garage washing her car um you know what I mean polishing the wood and each one had a price and if I did all these different tasks I could actually earn the money to wear the five hundred dollars sneakers so as I got older, I learned that I can have any fucking thing I wanted as long as I work for it. Like nothing was out of reach. Even mm-hmm. like when we traveled as kids, she allowed us so many different experiences to where like when we went out of town for spring break, she would rent out a limo and have like apple cider and the champagne. She's like she let us like really see what it was, what hard work did. Cause she worked for Blue Cross Blue Shield. She was mm-hmm. like the head of, the, tri- um, the three states, Ohio, Michigan, and Illinois. Mm-hmm. So she let us see what hard work is. And so that's kind of like what I want to do with my daughter. Like she can have any, as long as those grades is good, she can have anything her little heart desires. She going to have to work even with my two step step kids. Like they know, like they can ask me for anything, but it's like what we doing in return. Like during COVID, mm-hmm. um, my 15 year old, shout out Shira, her and her friends is over, right? Mm-hmm. And they needed some money, girl. So I was like, oh, y'all need some money. Well, y'all need to come interview for A job They was like What do you mean So I like Set up these fake interviews I like Told them they need to go In my closet And get them some interview clothes And interviews started At 9am And I was hiring And I was paying $10 an hour And they could earn Some money If they needed some money Mm -hmm. And they was like It was so funny Because they was upstairs Like practicing And I printed out (laughs) Job applications And stuff like that And I ended up Giving them all Like $150 Or whatnot To go to the mall But it wasn't about the money It was about the experience That like You can have anything That you want You just have to work for it So that's kind of like What I'm gonna do With story She get them grades up Mm -hmm. She can Chanel me down Like I don't care Have you seen um, The conversation around uh, Recently It was Chad Ochocinco and I guess his daughter, mm-hmm. it was either his daughter or his son asked for some shoes. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I think they were like Yeezys. He was like, no, you know, I went to football practice. I had to take the bus. I walked. I did this. And I had to keep my grades up. And people like, I think they like looked at his GPA. And so it was like kind of low. <laughs> so now comes into question, like even just nepotism and things like that. You know, just listen to what you said. Is it just about keeping the grades up, um, you know, making sure like, you know, I'm providing a lot. Like you said, I'm providing a lot for my child to make sure that they have a great future or are you going to do the thing where I sacrifice so you got to sacrifice? And, and no, to get I to mean, it. I'm not going to like, you know, like Story has um, like savings accounts and by mm-hmm. the time she get 18, Story will be a millionaire uh, in her own right uh, With her own account But like how her accounts Is set up No she won't have access To it at 18 Because I think You know Everybody at 18 Has poor judgment And you know There are some exceptions To the rules But I can't bank on Yeah <laughs> I can't bank on My child being an exception To the rules I just hope that Growing up That I instill Enough core values mm-hmm. That uh, She just I just want her to know, like, anything is obtainable. Like, if you want to fly private for the rest of your life, you can. Like, you can work to provide any type of lifestyle that you want. And I just want her to see, like, through me, it's possible. Like, I'm a girl from Detroit. I graduated with a GPA of 2 point. Maybe it was 1.8. I don't don't even know how I got a diploma from a Detroit public high school. But that's a whole nother, 
you know, that's a whole nother segment. But anything is possible. I always tell people, like, if I can do it, like me, the mm -hmm. girl who can't remember where her car keys is at. <laughs> like you know what I mean It's just hard work Like you know what I mean So it's it's definitely a technical. How do you feel about that Like when you um, Have kids Are or Will they have the silver spoon Or is it You know They They have to work for everything That they get So <clears throat> With my nieces and nephews I kind of take on the practice Like um, you have mm -hmm. You know My brother raises His kids A bit different Which is Um which is, you know, standard West Indian Haitian practices mm -hmm. on. It's like, I work for it, get a job, do this, do that. But for me, um, they're 16 and 14. Mm -hmm. I want like their focus for me. I want their focus to be school, um, get a great education, have the experience of being a teenager. Mm -hmm. Right. But at the same time, I'm listening to the things that they want to do and not creating this this notion of this is what I want you to do when you grow up. This is how I want you to be. This is what I see for your life. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to help them create their blueprint early on. So I definitely pour into them in ways like, okay, what do you like to do? Like my niece got into beading, mm -hmm. um, like making bracelets and different things. So even with that, it's like, okay, similar to how you were saying, it's like, she'll help me with certain things. Like she'll be on task as like, she'll, be my social media coordinator mm -hmm. I called her <laughs> like, it's so it's so cool to like incorporate mm -hmm. like those big jobs and like a fit like it gives them like and she's honestly she's she's better at it like you know <laughs> I've recently started TikTok and she's been helping me with make sure y'all follow me on there she's okay been, she's been helping me with my TikTok and okay. things like that and I make sure that you know I pay her a percentage I pay her a percentage from that so that way she's able to get um, the things that she needs And then on top of that She's like hey you know um, I just want my own structure When she was ready to get a job I was like cool Let me help you Fill out this this application Do it her Like I wanted her to do things On her accord And not feel like it's rushed That whole notion of By the time you're 17, 18 You need to get out the house Know what your life is mm -hmm. Go I don't college believe in that. Just, I don't either. I told somebody the other day, I don't want Story to leave me at 18. Like, she doesn't never had like, like you don't have to, like, there, there is no. no rush. If she's, <laughs> if if my child, my niece, whoever is figuring life out at 22 mm -hmm. and they need to stay with me as they build their business, I'm okay with that. You don't need to sleep in the basement, sweetie. Come upstairs into the guest room because that's your room. Right. That's how I feel about, yeah. like, my little sister, she lives with me and I was just like, even though I be threatening her all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And I was just telling somebody, I was like, man, I just hope she never moves out. And it was like, what? And I was just like, I just love her there. It just gives me like, she's still figuring out life. And like she has, yeah. she's starting her business and stuff like that. And it's just like, you know, I see so many other cultures do it and how beneficial it is in like the long run. And then I see like, you know, a lot of American culture, it's kind of like 18, all right, pack it up. All right. You, <laughs> for some reason, it's this thing where it's like 18, you got your life figured out, you know what you want to do. I don't want to put that that type of um, emotional, financial, and mental strain on, oh my God, I got to figure it out. Oh my God, why am I not a millionaire at 19? Because now they have all these pressures. Mm -hmm. So I'm making sure like just on my end with my godchildren and and my nieces and nephews, I don't want them to feel that pressure. It's like, hey, how you doing? How you, like, you know, doing the check-in, um, similar to how like Hood Healer was telling us. So it's like, I'm making sure I do the check-in with them. How your heart feeling? How you feeling? Is there anything you want to talk to me about? Is there anything I can help you with, with like, you know, scaling your hobbies or your business? What's going on with your grades? What are you going to do for the summer? Those type of convos. And it's not, it's like even like what story that um, the oldest daughter, right? She kind of like um, she was like stressed out. It was like, you got to you got you got to talk to my dad. You have to thank you. Mm -hmm. You have to talk to my dad. He's now saying he's not going to pay for my apartment and blah, 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 blah. Right. Because she want to get an apartment. Mm -hmm. So I was like, OK, I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to call him. Right. And so I called him. I was like, so now what's going on with this apartment? Mm -hmm. So he was like, man, I was just joking with her. Like, I'm going to pay for the apartment. But like she needs to like she needs to take on responsibility. So I'm like, listen. 
it's about how you deliver the message. I said, okay, you want her to take on the responsibility of actually paying rent, right? I said, so how about this? I might try this. How about you open up her account, right? You pay her rent, but you give her a portion of the rent that she must pay. You put it into an account to go towards her buying her first house or going towards her first house down payment. So she still has the responsibility of the rent. There is also a lesson in it. And at the end, she's actually going to be able to purchase, you know, a home or a down payment for a condo or a townhouse or whatever. I'm like, so it's more so about like, you know, not just doing a scare tactic um, um, yeah. stuff. It's just like, you know, teaching them in a, I tell them like teaching him in a fun, like in a fun way where mm-hmm. everybody wins. And he was like, you know what? You're right. He's like, but I was always going to pay her rent. I said, yeah, I know. He was like, I was just joking. I was like, well, I know from personal experiences that your jokes aren't funny. <laughs> 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 so let's joke a little less He was like bye girl <laughs> Okay Karen This question is for you They said you have given back a lot to other countries Including Haiti mm-hmm. What have you been working on or plan to do For your hometown of New Jersey Oh um, Man I absolutely Love Haiti and just doing the work there um, It's something that I've been doing Now for about like eight years Mm-hmm. Um, and to finally be able to work with an organization, one, it's very hard Mm -hmm. to find an organization that has the same ideologies as you Mm -hmm. and understands the importance of, of transparency. Mm -hmm. Cause let's be honest. It's just like at times when people donate money, they're like, what exactly am I donating to? Where's this going? What's this? What's that? And what I love about hope for Haiti is the organization I work with. They have transparency. They're updating me on everything, how money is being raised, where it's going, everything else. So this year we raised 133000 That's amazing. Thank you. We have um, new teachers coming in. A new school was built that used to be an elementary school, now is in high school. I'm super excited about. Um, but with Jersey... I've had my Live Civil Day mm-hmm. in June in Elizabeth. So shout out to everybody in Eastwick. Um, okay. I've been super excited about but COVID happened. And last year was my first time not doing it. We're trying to see what's going to happen this year in June. But it's every June. It's it's Live Civil Day. Um, it's on the 21st or the 20th. Mm-hmm. Um, my memory's bad right now. <laughs> but um, it's all about pushing the power play. We have the kids in... The gym, I make sure they get all new stuff. They're all unified because I hate the feeling of when you do a charity event, it's like a quick little bag and they get to take it home, but it's not really anything useful. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I want useful stuff. I want to be able to help. It really, it's about helping their parents who are at work and can't watch their kids during the summertime because they're stuck at, usually they're stuck at home and, or they want their kids inside for safety reasons. Mm -hmm. So taking a day out, in the summertime, and a lot of the t- a lot of the um, community areas in Elizabeth are segregated by choice. So it's like Puerto Ricans live with Puerto Ricans, Haitians in one area, Dominicans in one area. So I find a neutral place, the Mickey Walker Center, which I love. And all these different kids come. We bust them in. They play a game of basketball. They get a book bag from Adidas. They got new sneakers in it. They got new uniforms. They get to take an outfit home. They get all these products to help them with um, their nutrition. And it's just, it's cool. Because then, like, come September, the kids will be at me like, yo, I'm still using my book bag. People are still using their book bag. So I'll be excited by that. Yeah, That's so dope. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, living through giving. Uh, next, Ming, do you have any philanthropy work that you're doing in Detroit or Atlanta or you have plans to? Um, yeah, well, I do, like, as far as, like, give to, like, so many different organizations and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I just never really post it mm-hmm. because I just always, like, you know, like, I might feed the homeless. I used mm-hmm. to do that a lot. I might, like, sometimes I volunteer at, like, women's shelters, which you can't post because of, you know, safety reasons and stuff like that. But I do want to get more into starting my own foundation, and I do want it to be on... um um, for suicide and suicide awareness Because I don't know if, if a lot of people have known this But um, my little sister um, actually committed suicide in my bedroom um, Back in 2012 um, Due to just um, 
mental mental illness and depression and anxiety and stuff like that and um it is real and I do think like especially like in a black community it is um shoved under the rug and it is not uh, it's not made a real thing and people don't take it serious and people think like you have that like you like you're sad because you want to be sad and it's yeah. like no I'm sad and I can't help it and what made me realize that is that just like in her you know goodbye letter that she wrote to us it just said that she was just really tired of pretending to be happy and she lived a great life and she loved everybody and it was honestly nothing that nobody could do um, to just change how she felt. And um, and I think, you know, a lot of it played because she was so young. She was like 19 at the time. Like, it's really hard to tell your friends at 17, 16 years old that I'm depressed or I'm sad and you can't identify, you know, what you're sad at. Like a lot of you know, family members and, you know what I mean, would be like, girl, you sad, you driving. Like, my little sister, she wanted to, she was my aunt, favorite kid, Mm -hmm. right? So she got everything. It's like, girl, you sad because of what? You told her, remember, like, like a G6 came out that song? Mm -hmm. She got a brand new G6. Do you know what kind of car I got at 16? (laughs) I got a 1994 Thunderbird (laughs) and one door didn't open. (laughs) Ain't mean to tell me fresh out the lot, this lady go get you a brand new white G6, everything customized because you want it. And you know what I mean? Like she got, she literally got everything that she asked for. Like she was like the poster child in my house. And, but, you know, mental illness is real. And so, like, you know, we would be like, girl, you how is you sad? This lady give you about four, five hundred dollars a week. Like you come up with all these, like you, you, you get everything that you can possibly ask for. And like, you know, she was going to see a therapist, she was taking medicine and stuff like that. So, like, I do want to start a foundation that does focus on youth. Um mental stability and providing an outlet for them to speak to um and you know and stuff like that because I feel like it is swept up under the rug and a lot of people don't understand that you know it is depression and anxiety is real and I think like people confuse because it's something it's not tangible like you can't see it right it's like love like you can't like some people, like I've never been in love. I've never like couldn't eat, can't sleep. I have, so I know love is real because I've been in mm-hmm. can't function, can't think straight. You know what I mean? Because it's mm-hmm. not, but love is not tangible. Like anxiety is not something that you can like take a picture of and point it out. You know what I mean? It's actually a feeling. So like that is something that I do. You know, want to do, and also I want to. Um, you know, I love old people, so um, my <laughs> yes. retirement plan is to like. I want to get me an old Every person. Time you say that, I laugh because you always say I want to get me an old person. I want to get me an old person. I need to find me if you guys know any old people that need. Uh, you know, a grand, I, I'm a granddaughter. I come with my own everything. So I don't. I just want to talk and um, listen to your stories, and you be a little mean to me, a little feisty, a little like you know. But I am gonna get me an old person. I know people think I'm crazy, but I I freaking love old people, and I really want to have one of my own. So if anybody has an old person that you know they can't call, like I will call them every day and talk to them every single day. Like, I know I'm getting me an old person. Well, if somebody who is not um, having on one accord with their grandparent and want to say or them this they're way, too busy. Cause or I, yeah, or cause you I, may be too busy. I would like a, I would like to. Uh, Ming will take them off your hands. Yeah. I want to adopt yeah. old people. And um, like I literally am going to I was actually going to start even on like COVID now, like mm-hmm. the like care centers for older people are strict just because of COVID and stuff like that and I'm outside too much now to actually Mm -hmm. go inside of a facility but before COVID I was really planning on volunteering so I can go kick it with the old people and because they're (laughs) so funny but they're so wise that that wisdom Mm -hmm. is like it's it's like you can't put a price on it yeah so I would really like me an old person have you have you ever watched Inside Out no on Disney 
No. You should. It reminds me of everything you're talking about when it reverts back to um, your sister. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how we we identify certain emotions only, like happiness. But then when it came to, I guess, did S- sadness, depression, sadness, anxiety. So on Inside on uh, you have to watch Inside Out. Like, mm-hmm. the first time I saw it on a plane, I was, like, bawling, bawling. Because I was like, oh, my God. Why the... Disney movies are like life lessons. Mm -hmm. So happiness is always controlling this little girl's life. And she moves. So now a new event is happening in her life. And she's starting to have these different emotions. And they don't, she don't know what's going on. But you see all the different emotions in her head. Mm -hmm. But happiness always controlled. And now sadness started to like do some stuff Mm -hmm. and like take over and it's just like it created this world of chaos for her oh wow where now she's trying to realize in in this world we don't always have to keep a happy face we need to learn to coexist with all of our emotions so it was like disgust it was angry it was sadness and it was happiness and sad out yes i'm gonna watch it yes It's, it's it's such like it's such a good movie where it's like it's therapy yeah. Um, okay, somebody asked Karen, what is your routine for finding peace? And how do you go about finding it for yourself? Um, every day is every day is new, but let me tell you my routine. So I have these sticky notes in my mirror. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know, which I love. <laughs> I read them every single time. I'm like, should I be reading this girl? No, you can't. That's why they're there. They're so cute. I add new ones and remove them. So they're just affirmations that I have to say every day when I'm brushing my teeth. Um doing my skin regimen I just have to keep talking to myself Mm -hmm. um behind my door too so even before I get to the to the bathroom stage behind my door there are words for me to repeat and just affirm to myself on how I'm going to show up Mm -hmm. um then I do before I even pick up my phone I try to give myself 30 minutes to an hour so it's a power song Mm -hmm. Um, to get my day going it's usually my go-to song for a lot of the times have been Nicki Minaj I'm the best Mm -hmm. literally love that song Um, and then I'll either listen to Joel Osteen I'll listen to um, Sarah Jakes Roberts Joel Osteen um, those are like my two Mm go-to my power song get throughout my day and then at the end of the night I ask myself three questions And I usually just, I've been doing a vlog series since COVID has hit. And I'm over a hundred and something videos now that I told myself I'm going to put edit and put all together. So I can explain to people when they ask what COVID was, like my children and stuff. Well, what was COVID? Press play. Now you can see all of the emotions that I've dealt with. But I find different ways from if it's um, sitting in silence in my car, listening to a certain song, writing in my diary. I do a video diary type of entry. I find space for myself. May that be TV or sitting at the beach. But um, given to a lot of the conversation we were having last week, it's just about just finding stuff that you're okay with doing. But um, COVID has really taught me to be okay with myself mm-hmm. and spending time with myself, which I've been enjoying a lot. Because people are like, I haven't seen you or where are you? I'm like, I'm home. I'm just chilling. I'm, you I'm are good. definitely enjoying this stay yes. at home order. Yes. You took it too far, actually. I, I know, <laughs> but you know what? I learned, I learned to cook. I learned to do all these new things that I wasn't doing before. And I love that the way it has fulfilled me and, and has made me have a little bit more purpose in my life. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right. You're up next, Ming. What's one thing you would go back and change about last year if you could? Um, one thing I would go mm-hmm. back and change about last year would probably be um, I didn't give myself enough grace. I don't think. I think. Um, I think I entered in um twenty twenty. You know, out of a failed relationship And I like harped on it too long And I wish I wouldn't have I wish I would have just moved the fuck on a little bit faster, honestly Yeah Um, Because it was over And I knew it was over And it was just like, it was nothing I could do And so like, it was between that And um, Personally, I, I mean And other than that It would probably be like I wish I would have cleaned out of my closet Like I was at home for 
four months for like two months and I still need to fucking clean out my closet. It's closet after closet after closet. I man. know and I need to I need to condense, consolidate. Mm-hmm. Um and so now it's every weekend I'm cleaning out my closet, which it never happens. It'd be cute playing play M M&M when you do it. <laughs> <laughs> do it. You sent me in there to get a shirt. It was like it's a shirt in there. I'm like, uh, oh, you get tired walking over there. Like you have a you have a you have a lot of stuff. I have too much stuff. I need to get rid of some You're of like, it. You're like, it's it's there. Look to the left and think. I'd be like, I'm cool. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> like, I actually need to what? start wearing it because I have so much stuff to it. Now it's at the point to where I think I have nothing because I can't find it. Mm-hmm. So like it's like, oh, I need new stuff because I can't find it. So yeah. So those are my two things. What 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 about you? What would you change? Um, in about 2020. I would have. How about I'm gonna answer this question with you. I would have changed how you would have brought in 2022 because I feel like we brought it in in such a good light and space, and it was like, yes, this is gonna be a great year. It was we so were, fun. We were traveling, and then COVID hit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I felt like heightened in that space, given sometimes what I know now. If I would have knew then, I think I would have just like poured more into the friendship so you don't even feel like that like knowing especially we were going to be down for the rest of the year would have turned up a little bit more yeah I mean I realized that I should have just started dating way sooner I didn't start dating until like that June which was like what the fuck I should have been going on me some dates in January yeah (laughs) (laughs) okay next question is for Karen have you ever been fired from a job if so why oh my gosh yes (laughs) (laughs) um which one (laughs) um I got fired. I used to work at Jersey Gardens Mall. Shout out to everybody who's doing the nine to five there. That's in Elizabeth. That's one of the biggest outlets, outlet malls on the East Coast. I worked at Wilson's Leather. Mm-hmm. I think I got fired or I quit or I stopped coming. One of them. And then I worked at Nautica. Mm-hmm. Ooh, baby. Mm-hmm. I got fired only because I kept wanting to do what I wanted to do. So they'd be like, oh, we want you in the stock room. I'm like, I'm not giving stock room appeal. Mm-hmm. I would literally, because I really love my job. So I got dressed. I mean, you know, you personally, they'd like you to wear the clothes. I'd wear the clothes. I wanted to be a greeter. Mm-hmm. So I'd stand in the front and say hi and greet everyone. And the girl there did not want me to be a greeter. She's like, oh, no, people keep bumping into you. They think you're a mannequin. I said, that means I'm doing the job right. Mm-hmm. So like, let me be. But she, for some reason, wanted me in the back. She hated that I was in the front. I used to just walk into, and then we had sections we had to stay in, mm-hmm. like to sell certain merchandise. If somebody wasn't on their their like job, I'd walk up like, hey, how you doing? I just loved customer service. Mm-hmm. I loved it way too much. And the fact that I love the customers too much and I wasn't paying the manager. I wasn't, she felt like I wasn't giving her her respect. Because she'd be like, I want you over here. I want you to do this. I'm like, "Mm, but the customer needs me here. (laughs) The customer's always right. (laughs) And she'd be like, Karen, I'm giving you one more chance. I need you in the stock room. I'm like, but this customer wants 20 coats. I think we should go with the customer. And I have a job no more. Mm, Mm -hmm. I got fired from Subway. (laughs) You make sandwiches wrong? No, how could you make a sandwich wrong? I got fired for a technicality, actually. I was like 15. Mm-hmm. And first of all, I was 15. So let's start there. <laughs> Second of all, the like the closing manager, she used to want to close the store 30 minutes earlier. Who am I to tell a manager not to close the store early? So I guess she closed the store early one day. Mm-hmm. And I just went home. And so then I guess the owners, because, you know, like, subways are, like, privately owned, mm-hmm. a lot of them. So I guess the owners must have came back by or something and seen, like, we were closed. And, like, they were trying to make it seem like it was my fault. I'm like, dude, I'm 15. What? The, I don't even own a I can't. Yeah. I can't even close this place. I don't even have a key. <laughs> and so they had to, unfortunately, say, like, you know, unfortunately, we're going to have to separate and go our separate ways. And so I got fired. Man, that that customer service, like that customer service industry is a little slow, rough, but I loved it. I just that manager wanted to break me down. She wanted me to like 
She wanted me put me under her arm, like in her chicken. She wing. wanted you doing stock, and you wanted to do what, what Karen wanted to do. I ain't want to do stock, but this is the thing. I said I'm better. Like stock took me longer, and I don't think I was proficient or helping the company at all. Cause I'd go in the back. And I'd be like, do, 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 do. I could not focus back there. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. As much as you think I know what I'm doing, I don't know what I'm doing. You want me to, I want to color coordinate them and put them in certain sizes. You know, like it has like skew, description, sizes, color. And it's like, that's how I'm trying to do it. She's like, no, then we're going to put them by season in this. I'm like, that's not the way I'm trying to look. My, like my ADD is kicking in. All this, all this, my OCD is kicking in. Yes, I'm labeling myself. All these things. No, I felt like I was better used and utilized on the floor, helping customers, talking to the people. That's, she ain't want that. So she took that job away from me. I never worked in retail. I really wish I had. Of. I, I loved, I loved that retail job. It was so nice. Oh. Every once in a while, I pass by like and mm -hmm. look at the glass when I go back to Jersey. You fired me. <laughs> She's not there though no more, but you know, still. Um, next question. Ming. Ooh, this is from um this is an IG question. Um, they want to know how did you get to a million followers and just give some advice on increasing your social media presence, especially now. So many people are getting shadow banned and yeah, I'm, things. I'm, I'm always getting shadow banned now. And I actually wrote the um CEO of IG in his DMs to talk about me being shadow man and he act like he don't know what I'm talking about and I had to like pull up my receipts but that's a whole nother story down a whole nother tunnel but I will say this is that um on IG or any social media platform it's just like content is the new currency so the more content that you are able to create and the more creative or informative it is uh the more audience you can grow or fan base you can grow. So I would say like um, I grew my audience through creating content and I still truly believe that creating content, making sure that you're actually consistent um, with your content and posting and like reading comments and talking in the comment section and actually posting pictures daily, posting on your stories. I know IG really likes for you to do the reels. They really promoting the reels. And then they want you to stop being lazy and not not download it from TikTok. They don't want the TikTok logo on the reels because I guess they're trying to compete. Um, but I would just say content. I would just say creating, creative and informative content constantly. Mm -hmm. Next question. Yes. Um, it's for Karen. I love you all. Sarah Jake Roberts episode. What was your favorite part? Ooh. Favorite part with Sarah Jake's. Mm. When Sarah talked about soul care. Mm -hmm. Just the communication with it. How we show up in our lives. How we're taking care of ourselves. Because there's self-care. And there's soul care. Mm -hmm. When she explained the two, mm -hmm. and here I am thinking, I'm like, okay, I'm doing the, I'm doing the self care. I'm doing this now. I have a whole soul care checklist to make sure I'm taking part of that. So, just her um, implementing that into my life. Next question. I guess this is a duo. This is for both of us. Do you feel all social media is needed to be successful? Could we quit both social media for a month and still be successful? Um, yes, I do think social media is necessary for me to be successful because I run a, a online business mm -hmm. and um, at least 87% of my traffic to my site is is prompted from you know, social media or ad sponsors or stuff like that. So I think like social media for me and my business, since it is an e-commerce, it, it raises awareness and it allows people to never forget that we are there. So I, I would not quit. And when I say quit, like maybe I could quit, like me personally have somebody run it, but I wouldn't just shut down, like no activity on any of my social media platforms. That would not be good for business for me. That makes sense. Um, that makes sense. I guess from my thing, I do fast where I'm off of social for a while. I have a social media manager, 
Um, shout out to Sebastian and my niece. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and both of them will take helm and like make sure content is pushed out because what a lot of times people don't understand a lot of the content that I post on IG um, and Twitter and sometimes mostly Facebook too mm-hmm. are advertisings and partnerships or sponsorships and things like that just done in a very organic way. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I need social. Me too. Yeah, so I can't close it all the way. <laughs> KC, talk more about this question is from the fans. They want to know more about your breast reduction surgery. And they are curious to know what your experience was like um, because they're having one done soon. Oh, well, shout out to you. Um, I mean, when I did it, I I honestly, I just didn't like my breast. Mm -hmm. I... I didn't like my breast. I felt like they were heavy. I didn't like the way it looked in swimsuits. Um, And I honestly just felt top heavy. So I decided to get them um, reduced and lifted. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely, like, I loved it. It feels very natural. It's just, you know, me. I did it a couple years ago. Um, But, yeah, I didn't have any, like, side effects or anything didn't bother me. I think, like, a week later. I was up and out maybe a few days, mm-hmm. but yeah, you know, with, with any type of surgery, I like to just tell people you do it for you. Um, whether, whatever reason, if it's just for modification purposes or health reasons, you make sure that the doctor that you are going to see, I got like a bunch of referrals before I went, mm-hmm. you know, I talked to other people. Um, I went on Yelp. I did the work to make sure that there could be no issues, mm-hmm. especially I knew I'm like anemic and certain things just make sure I was like all the way prepared and ready. So that's something that you definitely should um, look into. But yeah, I mean, I loved it. I love the way my girls sit now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Ming, next question for you is they want to talk about friendships, real versus fake. Real versus Nakamichi. Nakamichi. Uh, okay, so like I always tell this to people like mm-hmm. me and my friends, we have like one of the one of my favorite things about me and your friendship is our transparency, right? And mm-hmm. I tell people like, you know, like we're human. So you're going to do some stuff to offend me and verse, vice versa. And like, you know, I'm not going to always agree with things that you do and vice versa. But one thing I always appreciate is like if we ever have like, you know, uh, like uh, something that bothers us We always like Hey like you know When you said this Or did this Like it really bothered me Because of this 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 And we just talk through it And like you know We get through it And that's just what Friendships are about And I always tell people Like if you ever decide to like go run to social media because of like a disagreement that we've had and we're friends, so it's bound to happen. It's bound to like you're bound to like disagree with somebody. You're like That's a given. Yeah. And that happens. But like if we have a small disagreement and next thing you know, you air it out on social media, we will never be friends again. When people do that, because <clears throat> I've had I've had a friend do that. Well, a so-called friend do that. Mm -hmm. When people do things like that, I honestly feel like they were never your friend. They were waiting for this moment to have this divide with you to then rush and go on social media. And I feel like they were just like, ooh, let me, like holding your closet door closed Mm -hmm. to like just waiting for the moment to try to like quote unquote expose or release all your bones or things like that. And then link up with people that that they personally know that like it just be like it's just weird that may not like you. I I'm always gonna say you cannot create anything positive out of a negative foundation. Mm-hmm. If it's built on a negative foundation, it's not gonna last. It's not gonna be positive and things like that. So I'm more of like when it comes to that type of friendship, well, we should always be able to have a conversation. It shouldn't be no sub, shouldn't be no anything because at the end of the day, we're adults. And if it's a love and a friendship, transparency should be there too mm-hmm. as as like always. But I know now in this new day and age, I don't know if it's like victimhood or sympathy So people will run like, let me run and go tell them what happened first so people could be on my side. Not understanding the internet doesn't care. They're not trying to pick sides. They're just trying to be entertained. They are. And I think once people realize that, like, they'll be like, oh, shit, maybe I shouldn't be so hasty to think, you know, tell them 
tell everyone my business or X, Y, Z. But yeah, to me, that's the biggest, that's the biggest faux pas. That yeah, way. I hate when people like expose their friends. I'm like, damn. Where friends like you, they didn't need an enemy in the beginning. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay, our next question is for Karen um, from our fans. The people want to know, are you dating anybody? Or are you single and ready to mingle? They really want to know that personal. Um, they want in your business. I'll say this. I am not, um, I'm not in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Relationship and dating, two different things. Right? Okay. Yes, they are. Okay. So I'm not in a relationship. I'm taking a pause on dating. Mm-hmm. But I will say, you know, the last couple episodes, you know, I made jokes going on dates or spoke on people in the past and mm-hmm. things like that. I mentioned in the beginning. Um Dating has been interesting. You of all know this, but dating has been interesting from a point of, I like it. I mean, out here um, in Los Angeles, you get so many people are like, it can be a hit or miss or things. I've met some incredible people. I've gone out on some incredible dates. I don't want to take anything away from like the men that I have met. And things maybe some don't work out. Some we have great friendships with, but yeah, the dating is 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 smooth. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 cool. Shout out, shout out to how they say in Chicago. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. Yeah. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to them folks and them. However they say it, she heard what all them say it. Um, Ming. Okay. Next, what advice can I give? What advice can you give? To a hairstylist like me that wants to move into a different city and set up professionally. Folks want to get out from their hometown and make it big in another city. Um, well, I would say like first always um, posting your work on social media and getting with. OK, for instance, um, Tevin, who had just moved um, to Atlanta, he didn't have any um, you know, true. He was building his clientele. So real he, quick. Tell our audience who is Tevin. Oh, Tevin mm-hmm. is his name is Hair Assassin on Instagram. Okay. Um, and when he first started and came to my salon, he was building his clientele. And so, like, what he did was he got like a um a cute um popping girl from Instagram and offered his services to her for free mm-hmm. in his free time. And he actually got to show case his craft and she just posted him and like it kind of like catches on like like wildfire like you'd be surprised how many people use um hashtags to find hairstylists and makeup artists and stuff like that so just making sure that people can actually see the quality of your work and what you can do you'll be surprised especially like moving to Atlanta There's so many influencers that like I literally get my hair done three times a week so like when hair started to me, I'm like, hey, mean, can I do your hair? Sure. When? Like, when are we doing this? Right. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I just say, like, just getting your craft out there and letting people see it and getting a brand ambassador. Um, that was one thing that Tevin Incorporated was getting a brand ambassador, you know, doing her hair a couple of times a week and being able to, like, introduce herself to the city and to her audience. And, you know, what I mean, he built his clientele extremely fast. Karen, similar question. What advice would you give to somebody transitioning from working at a company to being an entrepreneur or self-employed? So a lot of the things you learned at that company, you can implement at the former company you were at an employee. You can implement into creating um, your structure um, at your company. So let's see. First thing I know I mentioned with your business, it's having the core values, Mm -hmm. understanding what's important to you. Um, creating um, benchmarks. Mm -hmm. So when I say benchmarks, you have short-term and long-term goals. Mm -hmm. And that's for your personal, Mm -hmm. for your business, but then just for your business itself. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's like, hey, I want to bring in from a personal, knowing you is like, hey, I want to be able to employ three more people in a year. Or what you want to do in three months, six months, nine months, a year, two years from now. Mm -hmm. So on that the business side, it's like, okay, I want to grow on a social level here. I want to implement, have this many followers on Facebook. I want to be able to bank this much money. So making sure that you have that list created. And then um, another thing is so many people get caught up in thinking, okay, I need to get 
depending on the business, I need to get the PR person first mm -hmm. as opposed to maybe I need to get the accounting. Maybe I need to get the marketing person. Maybe I need to get a social media manager. Maybe I need to get an assistant. Maybe I need to get a brand ambassador. So it's really doing an inventory on your company to see what exactly is missing because there's no full on blueprint on this is the way you started. This is the way to be successful. Every business is different. So really looking at what is missing from your company. So those three things, really. Okay. And the last question is, when will, when will you be taking the Girl I Guess podcast live? Can we get a tour? COVID's still happening, right? Uh, oh, she from Atlanta. <laughs> we just opened in L.A. She, uh, we just opened. People are becoming fully vaccinated every day. I think we should give the people a tour. Yes. Um, once we get close, I think we were talking about anniversary episodes off air. Okay. So uh, maybe an anniversary episode. Yeah. Let's plan something for yeah. later on this year or something. Yes. Atlanta, LA, Miami, Jersey. We're going to Detroit. You know, I love me some Chicago. And I love Houston. Houston, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, we got to go to like one yeah. of the upstates, like Seattle or one of them too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're going to figure out, we're going to figure this out off air, but this Ask Me Anything. I like was, it. Yeah. This was fun. Hopefully you learned a lot about us and we opened up some more and yeah. It was a great episode. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you so much for the questions. Um, yeah, keep sending them in. Keep DMing them to us. And we'll have another Ask Me Anything episode. Girl, I guess. <laughs> <laughs>